Section 5.2 is about exponential functions. And an exponential function is just a function where we have the variable up in the exponent. The number that's down here is called the base. So this is an exponential function with a base of 2. In this section, you're also going to be introduced to this little e, which is called Euler's number. which is about 2.718 and so on. It's one of those numbers like pi that goes on forever. And since you're going to have a lot of evaluation problems with these, you're going to have to know how to solve them. All you're going to do for them is type that into your calculator and hit the enter key. You're going to find that little caret right here above the division and e is going to be right here above the division symbol. So just hit second function and the division symbol and the E will come up. So whenever you see problems like this, just type them into your calculator and you'll get the right answer. The next thing we're going to do is basic graphing of exponential equations. You're not going to have to get too exact. And your basic exponential equation looks like this. This kind of up curving thing. Always going through 0, 1. When we get to the point 1, we're always at the base. In this particular case, the number 1, 2. And when we get to negative 1, we're at 1 over the base. Or negative 1, 1 half. But what you really need to remember is that this up-curving thing has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. The domain, which are the x's, are all real numbers. And the range, which are the y's, are 0 to infinity, or just the part strictly above the x-axis. But you're going to have to graph things that look like this. But it won't be too hard. What you need to do is just remember the basic shape of the exponential equation and then go through all those translations in the same order that you did when you were doing translation of functions. You just need to know which piece goes where. The horizontal shift comes from here. So that's a horizontal shift three to the right. And just like the other ones, it goes in the opposite direction you would think. So we have a horizontal shift three to the right. Vertical stretch occurs from here. That's my vertical stretch. So vertical stretch by a factor of three. Reflections were kind of like the other reflections we did. There's my x-axis reflection out in front of the function. And there's my y-axis. So in this case, I have a reflection about the x-axis and about the y-axis. And the vertical shift is just what you would expect it right out here. So vertical shift, one up. So if you're doing this on the computer program, you pick the basic shape, and then you just go through all your translations. And if you're doing this um, without um, computer assistance, you can just plug this into your calculator, plug the whole thing into your calculator, and you will get something that looks like this. And all you really need to know about this is the domain is negative infinity to infinity, which never changes. And our range, in this case, is negative infinity up to where that asymptote is. 
and that's as exact as you're going to have to get with these. So don't worry too much about them. Next, you're going to have to um, do some compound interest problems. So here's a typical problem. We're investing 77000 at 3.5% compounded quarterly. How much will there be in two years? And for that, we're going to use the compound interest formula, which is that. So another formula for you to memorize. The R is the rate as a decimal. N is the number of times you're compounding per year, in this case four because of quarterly. And the time is going to be the time in years, which in this case is two. So in this case, if we want the amount, we're going to take the principal, multiply it by one plus point zero three five, divide by four, times four, times two. And when you plug this into your calculator, make sure you put the exponent in parentheses or you'll get the wrong number. And then you just have to plug this into your calculator. And your answer should be 0.0. So if you did not get this answer when you plug this into your calculator, um, go back and check your parentheses. That's usually where the mistake is. That is the answer you should be getting. The next type of problem you're going to have is when will the amount reach a certain amount? And this is a graphing calculator type problem. It's basically there because MyLabs Plus likes graphing calculators and they always attach this type of problem to this type of problem and it's hard to pull them off. Later on you learn how to handle this algebraically but for right now what you are going to do when you get a problem like that is take out your calculator and for Y1 what you will see is basically this equation with time replaced by X. So there's the basic calculation for the amount and down below you are going to see the amount that it's going to reach. In this case, 100,000. Then what you're going to do is graph those, and your book is going to say, change the viewing window so these show up. That's not really necessary. What is really necessary is hitting second calc and going down to number five and using the intersect function and where those two functions intersect is going to be your answer. So let's go in and try that. Let's go in and activate these two and then graph them. And as you can see, it's a big problem. It's working away at it and nothing's showing up on my screen. And that's normal because this screen is 10 by 10 and the numbers are up around 100,000. And now it's stopped, so I can go on. Hit second calc down to intersect and it's going to ask you for a first curve, second curve and a guess just to enter through those and it'll work away and tell you that the intersection occurs at 7.5 which in this case stands for about 7.5 years. So let's try another type of problem that you're going to run into. A problem where you're given the formula. In this case, we're given this formula until the t equals zero occurs in 2005, and we want the amount in 2008. All we're going to do is plug in the formula. Three is the number of years between 2005 and 2008. Plug that into the calculator and get our answer. The main problem area here usually occurs right there. Actually, let me put it down like you'd see in your calculator. This is the growth function, and this is the initial amount. 
So later on when we're getting more in depth on this, just remember this is the initial amount and this is the actual growth rate. So as long as you put your multiplication in between there or even these parentheses, you'll get the right answer.